Clarksville was founded in 1871 when Charles Clark bought two acres of land in this area. Um, and he bought it from General Shelley. He intended Clarksville to be a community both for himself to live and for all his friends who were freed slaves. They had been emancipated and now they needed a place that they could call their home. And Clarksville was the place that he founded for it to be a home. When you, need, when you have a home, you also need a church. You need a religious place, at least the people back then did. And so they formed the, the church, which they intentionally named Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church. So what is important to realize is that Mr. Clark formed this community in part because of obviously the Emancipation Proclamation by Abraham Lincoln. And a little known fact is that Lincoln was being discouraged from announcing the Emancipation Proclamation. A number of his advisors told him, look, you're in a difficult re-election campaign. You're gonna lose if you announce this proclamation. And his response was, if I don't do this, I will never be able to live with myself. And the selfless act of President Lincoln led directly to Mr. Clark being able to buy the property and form in Clarksville, the place that we all live in and honor today. When I moved into this neighborhood in 1978, the streets on Patterson Avenue were not paved. Many of the houses were run down. I just assumed it was general neglect, but it turned out it was more than that. It was intentional racism. The city's goal was to move all black people who lived in West Austin to East Austin. They did that by um, having a plan in 1928 to provide services, utilities, other municipal services to people only if they lived in East Austin. If they lived in West Austin, if they lived in Clarksville, they were not going to get any services. The local banks cooperated in that movement by refusing to lend money to any black homeowner in Clarksville. If they were willing, if that person was willing to move to East Austin and buy a home, the banks would lend the money. But if they stood their ground and said, we want to stay in Clarksville, the banks refused. The city continued its goal of forced relocation with two major um, movements. One was the Mopac Expressway and the other was the Crosstown Expressway. Clarksville residents for the first time um, organized, fought the city, they lost the Mopac battle and somewhere between 26 and 33 families were displaced. But they won the Crosstown battle and they stopped this freeway from coming through Clarksville and destroying it completely. Um, and in celebration and in observance, they applied for and were granted federal historic designation. Just when the Clarksville residents felt safe, they had utilities, they had city services, that was discovered that this was a very um, great place to live by developers. It was close to downtown um, and had a history. Uh, one group of developers came to a number of residents, offered to buy vacant lands with the promise of building an affordable home for their family. Instead, they bought those properties and built a home for people who had already pre-qualified with the banks who were friends of theirs. They also owned some rental property and tripled the rent. So what was happening was Clarksville's existence was being threatened by these developers. In response, Mary Baylor and Pauline Brown, two incredible longtime residents of Clarksville, helped organize the Clarksville Development, Clarksville Community Development Corporation. Um, with the help of John Hennenberger, Kathy Tyler, and architect Tom Hatch, 
the CCDC borrowed money, was donated land and, and houses, and we built 17 affordable houses, houses that we could rent to low-income people, houses that would be, be preserved from the developers. So here we are in 2018. The CCDC is thriving. We have an incredible property manager, Rose Gabriel. We own 17 units of low-income housing, which are always full. There's a long waiting list. We have a diverse community of people that we're renting to, and including a family that fled war-torn Somalia and another family that was living in a homeless shelter. Um, we provide entertainment for the kids by having a fun fest in June, a Halloween party, a Christmas party, and this, and we are always looking to get new properties to build more low-income housing. So in one sense, we are successful. In another sense, there's a challenge to maintain the history of Clarksville. There are people who believe that in the 21st century, there is no reason to maintain a historic community. But we disagree. A long overdue struggle has commenced to take down statutes honoring Confederate generals, to rewrite history books to tell the truth about why the Civil War was fought, and to change the names on buildings that honor Confederate soldiers. Those changes are only part of what is needed. What is also needed is to continue the memory of the positive things that the free slaves did. And one of the things that they did was form this incredible community of Clarksville. And it's been our goal since the inception of the CCDC and it's our goal in 2018 to preserve and publicize the memory of Charles Clark and the history of the community that he founded, Clarksville.